Howdy folks, this is Tim Favreau with another edition of the CDL Podcast. Educating and entertaining you, one mile at a time. Remember to comment, chime in, and tell us your thoughts. This podcast is one man's opinion, not a lecture or a sermon. Also, please help spread the word about our show, and thank you for listening. Today's show is going to be about the Smith System. Five Keys to Safe Driving. Some of you may have heard about the Smith System. Others are going to say, what is the Smith System? So let me explain it to you. The Smith System is a system for driving that enables drivers to learn how to avoid collisions through mastering their behavior through intense on-hands training. I was first introduced to the Smith System many years ago when I worked for Laidlaw Transit. Uh, They were the school educational busing company before first student took them over. And they used the Smith system in teaching all of their drivers very good defensive driving habits. They didn't create the system. The system was developed in 1952 by Harold Smith, hence the name Smith system. Since then, Harold Smith developed the Smith System Driver Improvement Institute, which today You can go as a driver, or your company can send you as a driver, or have somebody come to your company to teach your drivers all the key points of what it is to be a good defensive driver. The Smith System has five principles for safe driving, which they refer to as the five keys. And over the years, I've come up with a simple sentence to remember these keys. The sentence or saying that you can use is, all good kids like milk. The first letter of each word will remind you of a key that is in the Smith system. So let me say it again, all good kids like milk. So the first key will be for the letter A in all. The A stands for aim high in steering. Now, what does aim high in steering mean? When you're looking and driving down the road and you're aiming high in steering, you're looking at the lane you're in. And you want to have your vehicle centered in that lane. You're looking far enough ahead. You're looking to see what's coming up. And you want to have the best chance if you have to move a little bit to the left or right. So you stay centered in the lane. By doing this and looking far enough ahead, you can see things that are moving and fixed objects that are at least a block away in city traffic or at least a half mile ahead on expressways or highways. Since you're a professional driver, you're going to spend a lot of time on in and around cities, suburbs, expressways, throughways, highways. So you always want to be looking quite as far ahead as you can, either a city block or about a half mile. While doing this, with the vehicle in front of you, you're going to try and maintain a safe following distance. We will cover that in another episode, what good safe following distances are. What you think may be a safe following distance is probably not. Again, we'll cover that in another episode. Avoid swerving when passing other vehicles, turning, or approaching parked vehicles. And aiming high in your steering allows you to reduce speed to allow for poor conditions or reduced visibility. The second key in the Smith system, and remember to saying all good kids like milk, would be the G in good. The G stands for get the big picture. While you're driving down the road, you want to look all around you. And you want to avoid being boxed in when the lanes ahead are blocked. So you can see if you're using the first key, aiming high in your steering and looking down the road, you can see if there's a problem and know where to be before the problem gets to you. If you're looking down the road 12 to 15 seconds ahead or even further, you can see problems before they get to you and you can react properly. Just as with the first key, you want to avoid severe braking and abrupt turns. 
a lot of the cargo you carry doesn't react well when you swerve or turn rapidly. Whether it's bulk cargo, a busload of kids, or a limo full of passengers going to a wedding, nothing reacts very well when you swerve or brake hard. Getting the big picture also means that you should adjust your speed when approaching intersections. If you're looking ahead, again, 12 to 15 seconds and aiming high in your steering, you should see an intersection before you get to it or a red light before you get to it and gradually slow down smoothly as to not disturb your cargo or passengers. Also, while getting the big picture, you're looking ahead to cars that are going to come into your area of where you're driving, traffic that's merging or pulling out of driveways or parking lots. You're going to try the best you can to anticipate the moves of the other drivers and pedestrians as they get out in front of you. You're also going to want to slow down before you enter an intersection that has no controlling lights or signs in it. For an example, like a roundabout, the traffic flow never really stops in a roundabout, so you really want to make sure that you see what's going on before you get there and try to blend and merge with the traffic as best as possible. Which leads us to the third key in the Smith system. Keep your eyes moving. Remember the saying, all good kids like milk? K is for keep your eyes moving. So you want to keep your eyes moving at least every two seconds. Check your left and right mirrors. Look ahead of you. Look behind you. And when you're looking behind you, you want to get to that spot about every eight seconds or so. So if you start from the left, it'd be two seconds to the left, two seconds to the front, two seconds to the right, two seconds to the rear. No more than eight seconds to check all four sides of your vehicle. Always check to your sides before changing lanes, but also check to the rear. This includes before you turn or stop, always check all of the mirrors and look behind you. If you happen to see an erratic driver, a crazy four-wheeler, another truck driver who is just jumping back and forth between lanes, stay clear of them. Give them some room. Let them get away from you. The further they get away from you, the safer you will be. While you're doing this, continue to check in all directions and leave a space cushion before you or in front of you when you're starting up from an intersection. So as you leave the red light or stop sign and there was a vehicle in front of you, let them get a ways ahead of you before you go and start to flow back in with the traffic. You want, again, keep that safe following distance that we talked about in the first step. Also, don't stay fixated on a specific object. If there's a vehicle in front of you, do not stay fixed looking at their taillights. Or if there's something happening off on the side where there's a football game going on, or you see animals in a pasture running near the road, watch that. Acknowledge that for a second, but then keep your eyes moving. Do not keep focusing on that. Again, as we said, you want to move your eyes about every two seconds. You don't want to become fixated on any one object too long. Which leads us to the fourth key in the Smith system. All good kids like milk. The L stands for leave yourself an out. Leaving yourself an out happens when you're not paying attention in the first three keys or something unexpected happens that you weren't aware of as it was coming towards you. When you leave yourself an out, you're going to recognize the lane of least resistance and position your vehicle accordingly. So what you're doing here is as you're following a vehicle in front of you, you're going to follow at a safe following distance so you have plenty of time to brake. But if you can, you're also going to position yourself in traffic so that there's nobody alongside of you on either the left or the right, depending on how wide the highway you're on is. The more room you can leave you and give yourself places to move to and react to in case of an emergency, the better off you will be. What happens a lot while we're driving is a four-wheeler will try and get between you and the truck in front of you or whatever vehicle's there and ruin that space that you just set up to make it safer for you to drive. 
That's okay. They're going to do that. They're not the professional driver. You are. So just increase that space again. Leave yourself an out and try and err on the side of safety. I know it's hard to do when it's rush hour traffic and you have some place to get to, but you really need to slow down and offer yourself this space cushion. You need to leave yourself an out. Which brings us to the fifth and final key. All good kids like milk. The M stands for make sure they see you. Now, how do you make sure that they see you? This is why if you're in a tractor trailer, you have two horns. You have a city horn and you have your highway horn. The city horn is something you can use if somebody's close by you and you just want to get their attention so they acknowledge the fact that you're here in this 80,000 pound vehicle or this school bus full of kids or this dump truck full of stone that you want them to acknowledge you're there. So a couple of nice little friendly toots on your city horn helps get that attention from them to you. So you can look eye to eye so they can acknowledge you on the fact that you're there and it'll make both of you better, safer drivers. Another way to make sure they see you is have your lights on for better visibility. It doesn't have to be just raining or foggy out to do this. You can do this in bright, sunny conditions. It helps other drivers see you. That's why it's there. It's not just for night. Having your lights on is a great way to make sure that they see you. When you go to change lanes, turn your turn signals on. You do use your turn signals, right? Put them on early. Make sure that there's plenty of time for you to get over in the lane on where you need to go to, but don't just turn it on and head on over because there was a gap. I know a lot of you say, well, they're not leaving me any room to get in. My answer to that was you knew for a long time that it was going to be a left-hand turn coming up or a right-hand turn coming up if it's multi-lane highway, and you could have had yourself positioned better before then. So make sure you do that. Get into the lane you need to be. Do it safely and legally. And just make sure that you have those turn signals on so the other people know what your intentions are. Another thing while doing all of this, make sure that if you're passing another vehicle that you're not riding in their blind zone. You have blind zones all around your vehicles. Don't hang out in other people's blind zones. Now, this also goes into what I'll cover in another episode, which I'm going to call turtle racing. If you're driving your tractor trailer down the highway and your maximum speed is 68 miles an hour and you're trying to pass another tractor trailer whose maximum speed is 68 miles an hour, it's going to take you all day to pass that truck. Now again, I can understand if you're in a hurry and you're trying to get around this guy who maybe is slowing down every now and then and just making your life frustrating. However, if you're the person and you see somebody doing that to you that's trying to get around you, and you're not slowing down to let them get by, you're part of the problem also. All you have to do is slow down just a mile or two an hour, let them get around you, and then turn your cruise control back on. For that minute or two that you slow down to let them get through, keeps the highway safe, keeps both of you from probably having a collision, and will be a very good sign to the general public who are sitting behind you for the last five miles that this driver is a professional and he understands my frustration as well. Now I'm going to pause for a moment here and say that I did not come up with the Smith system. Again, this is a copyrighted system by the Smith System Driver Improvement Institute. They have a website that can teach you all of this very well, as I said in the beginning. And if you want to seek this out in a professional setting, reach out to them or your management of your company and talk to somebody about getting the Smith System training. When I worked at the Professional Driver Institute, we trained a lot of companies and drivers in the Smith system. And it is something that a lot of these companies to this day say is the best thing that has happened to both them and their drivers. 
When I taught the Smith system for Wegmans, I taught it to not only their CDL drivers, but to their box truck drivers as well. They have a fleet of box trucks that deliver flowers and other things to residential areas, residential stores, and their box trucks were having just as many problems as their full-size tractor-trailer drivers were. Wegmans benefited immensely from this driving program, and it has made them one of the largest grocery retailers, and their ISS and safety scores are extremely good due to the fact that all of their drivers implement and use the Smith system. So let me recap on this. The first key, aim high in steering. Aim high in steering allows you to avoid collisions by seeing, evaluating, and acting upon all the information available. In step two, or key number two, get the big picture. Fewer mistakes are made when you have the complete traffic picture. In key number three, keep your eyes moving. Proper scanning techniques, as I described, separate safe drivers from people who make costly errors. In key number four, leave yourself an out. All that separates drivers from a collision is space. Use that to your advantage. And with key number five, make sure they see you. Seek eye contact and use your warning devices at the same time. Now that's a lot I've just taught you in a short amount of time. All good kids like milk. Aim high in steering. Get the big picture. Keep your eyes moving. Leave yourself an out. Make sure they see you. All good kids like milk. So how can you practice this each day in your driving habits? How can you work on one step at a time to make sure that you become a better driver? What I propose is that each day of the week, you use a different key. On Mondays, you practice aiming high in your steering. Keep telling yourself, I need to look ahead 12 to 15 seconds. I need to see what's going on. So every Monday, you spend all day trying to do just that key. On Tuesdays, you work on getting the big picture. You wind up seeing everything that's going on around you, to the left, to the right, to the forward, to the back. You see everything that's going on, make mental notes of what is going on around you so you can react better. On Wednesdays, keep your eyes moving. It's going to be hard at first for you to make yourself do this, but once you fall into the rhythm of it, you'll get pretty good at it pretty quick. Two seconds to your left mirror, two seconds ahead of you, two seconds in your right mirror, two seconds behind you, then you're back to that left mirror again. On Thursdays, you're going to work on leaving yourself an out. You're going to increase that following distance from the vehicle in front of you, and you're going to try and position yourself in traffic to leave no vehicles on the left or right side of you. I want you to practice this all day. And then on Fridays, I want you to make sure that they see you. That means using your city horn politely to get their attention, maybe flashing your headlights at them once, not multiple times. And the reason why I say multiple times, if you flash your lights multiple times, you can get the attention of DOT, and they may not like that. So just flashing your lights once is sufficient. Do what you can to make sure that they see you and you get contact with those other drivers. So that's it. That is the five keys to the Smith system. All good kids like milk. If you want to know more or have questions, please put them in the show notes. But I highly encourage you, if you want to use this proven system of driver safety, Seek them out. I have all the information to the Smith System Institute in the show notes, email addresses for them, contact phone numbers, how to find them on social media. Talk to somebody there. They will definitely help you with what needs to be done. The Smith System is not only based in the United States. They also have 
institutes set up in the UK as well. And I have all of that information also in the show notes. And with that, I want to say thank you for tuning in to another edition of the CDL Podcast. To learn more, connect with our community, and get free resources to build your career, please go to thecdlpodcast.com.